Hey, hey, what's good everybody? I'm glad to have you here today on this reading with me and I thought that today our topic could be my past life. So we are going to have a pick a card reading where you guys will choose uh, the pile that you resonate with most uh, so that we can derive some facts and insights when it comes to you guys' past life and how it impacts this lifetime, you know, uh, how how actually it is influencing your current incarnation. So uh, we will dig a little bit de deeper uh, today, so stay with me if you are up for such type of a content, you know, so let's begin. So, my past incarnation. Let's check what we have for you guys when it comes to your past incarnation. Pile one. Your past incarnation, past life. What, what we have. What we have for your past incarnation? What we have for your past incarnation? So, as usually, we are going to use some astrological placements as well as um, tarot prediction, as I always do. So, for those of you who are on the channel, you are already familiar with my style. But let's see. What we have for your past incarnation? This wanted to pop out. Okay. Already many interesting things here. Okay. What I can see immediately for many of you guys Mm, I see you guys as being this benevolent protector type of figure in your uh, latest past life. So you were somebody who was like kind provider type of a person, you know, uh, that patriarch or you didn't have to be a male, you know, uh, you could be a woman as well. Uh, but that patriarch figure who was also in touch with his feminine feelings and... Uh, who was not overly masculine when it comes to expressing his generosity, his uh, kindness of spirit, just, you know. Uh, so that's something really beautiful here. Uh, so um, it's like you were, you know, just that tough masculine figure who was also in touch with their feminine expression, with their uh, feminine sides of spirit, you know. Uh, and that, that was something really beautiful uh, about you guys when it comes to your last incarnations, you know. Uh, so I feel like you guys were um, just that person in your community that everybody came for uh, advice or when anything bad really happens and nobody knows what to do, everybody would come to get you guys and, uh, you know, to get some benevolent... Uh, advice or influence from you guys. We also have here a moon in the tent house, you know. Uh, so what I can derive from that astrological placement is that you guys were very intensely focused on your career, on your uh, financial material uh, well-being. So you were very identified with your uh, role of being just provider and, and the one who has to uh, how do I say it? Uh, 
who has to enable uh, the financial benefits in any given situation, you know, uh, so beautiful. Uh, I see for many of you that you did have some type of professorial role. So, so you may even have been professors, lecturers, teachers, uh, you know, just somebody who teaches. You had some type of a discipline that you taught when it comes to your current last incarnation before this one, you know. Uh, and people, I feel like they felt very secure when you guys were... Uh, in surroundings. We do have this Jupiter in the first house, so uh, I also think that you did have some strong uh, benevolent spiritual inclinations. Uh, I believe you guys were the type of person who had a lot of God's mercy on themselves when it comes to fulfilling your prayers. So uh, for some of you, I'm getting that you may have been a village shaman or things of that nature, because I see you guys literally being the type of a person that people go to to make a prayer instead of them, uh, for a certain cause, for a certain illness, for certain anything, you know, uh, and that this may even be a little bit manifested in this lifetime of yours. I feel like you guys may have this ability, just like you imagine something and it happens, you know, in like two or three days or much faster than for other people. So really strong power of manifestation in this lifetime. And this may stem from this last uh, previous incarnation of yours, you know. Uh, so that's really beautiful something. I feel like uh, for you guys in your last lifetime, it was really important your relationship with your siblings. Uh, you know, siblings, I feel, and close cousins. Uh, so I'm getting this picture of a lot of celebrations, uh, gatherings, you know. Uh, there, there, there was really this close-knit relationship with your siblings and you guys. You know, I feel like you were mutually discussing some type of financial matters and things of that nature. So you guys may even have had some type of family business with your cousins, with your siblings, uh, really beautiful uh, and interesting, interesting energy that I'm getting here. Uh, so I'm trying to direct the focus because the cards are giving me so much, you know. Uh, we do have also Leo in the first house and some indication when it comes to talent, so I feel like you guys were very talented person and that many of you many of your talents you uh chose to experience in your previous incarnation so uh if in this incarnation you may be feeling a little bit apathetic or uh like you're not overly talented that's because that's something that you already realized in your past lifetimes and currently soul is not eager for that experience because on some deep subconscious uh, level, you know that you already had that experience, you know, uh, what soul experiences once it doesn't want anymore. I mean, it can come, but uh, we are not so as obsessive about th those things as uh, for some other things that perhaps we are not so experienced about on soul level, if that makes sense, you know. Uh, so... We do have this Mercury in 12th house, so I believe a lot of your communication, of a lot of your uh, dealings with people on a daily level were somehow behind the scenes, so that makes sense uh, if you were this shaman type of a figure or uh, somebody, because I do believe that you had some type of secret social dealings, uh, if this makes sense, you know. Uh, and besides that, uh, you were really prone to uh, advertise equality, you know. I believe that you were very open-minded and liberal in your past life. And uh, if you were this benevolent protector type of a guy, then you were very, uh, you know, for equality and equal rights and uh, anti-racism, I don't know, uh, things of that nature, you know. Uh, so that's really beautiful, something here. Um, and what else we have? I really see for many of you that in your 
uh, last previous lifetime you had some big great passion or goal that you pursued the most of your life so you were uh, putting your energy efforts your strength into the, that goal and it's like nothing else mattered as much so uh, your life purpose was centered about some type of an activity that you were uh, doing or, or fulfilling in your last lifetime so i can say that you had this strong dharma you know uh you know what is dharma our higher purpose something that we would do uh even if money was not in question you know uh so uh really interesting something it will be related to uh some type of exercise for some of you some type of health awareness as well uh, I feel like there was this great amount of health awareness when it comes to your past uh, lifetime and that you eagerly pursued that like you would get so in the zone when you would do um, that chosen type of exercise that you were obsessing about or uh, let's say it may have even been um, fasting, intermittent fasting type uh, and similar styles. So, well, it was a past lifetime, but some similar, sty uh, similar type of fasting, I feel uh, that for some of you may have even been for religious purposes, you know, uh, and you had many, many lovers in your past time. I feel like you were very, well, I wouldn't say promiscuous, but, you know, uh, when it comes to love life, just full of energy, if we may call it that. But I see it like that was more for your earlier years. But later in that lifetime, I feel like you guys had some really strong, solid partnership with a person that was really quite your match, you know. Uh, because this is something beautiful. Uh, I feel like you had that person who is... You may even feel a little bit empty in this lifetime because for some of you I'm feeling like your entire lifetime you feel like you are perhaps missing somebody or uh, something of that nature, you know. So that's really beautiful. Uh, it may even be your twin flame or higher soulmate. Uh, but I really am getting strong presence and getting even emotional when I'm talking about that. So uh, I feel like there was somebody whose presence was of immense importance to you guys in your past lifetime. Uh, and until you find that person again in this lifetime, I feel like you guys uh, won't be able to have peace with any uh, average stereotype uh, relationship, you know. Uh, but that's even beautiful, uh, really a lot of beautiful things here, you know, uh, what else we do have, we do have North Node in Taurus, so I feel like you guys were obsessive when it comes to achieving material uh, abundance in your previous lifetime, you know, uh, and even obsessive about your family, about uh, your closest people to you guys so that's something interesting for this pile but let's see what else we do have we do have leo in the sixth house so uh, that confirms uh, to us that you guys were grand on uh, achieving a healthy health routine or uh, healthy even daily routine i feel like you guys had the correct uh, exact hours when you would woke up uh, i don't know do your religious for example, if you are Muslim, how do they do those uh, early procedures when they just get up and uh, I don't know how is how is it pronounced in English? You know when they bow down to God and uh, salute uh, like in a form of prayer or something. So you would do like your prayers, your fasting, then you would go out jogging and you know really beautiful pile all in all. You know. But I feel like you were a true social butterfly, you know, uh, your life evolved around people uh, and you wanted to be always around people, you know, you were like people's person. So that's something beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
But I really feel if you had some sense of deep emptiness or void in this lifetime, it may be that subconsciously you are missing the presence of this great connection that you had in your past time, past life. Uh, and that's really something beautiful. I feel like you guys were very benevolent and charitable when it comes to your acting toward people who are in lower life positions or... Uh, I feel like you fought uh, strongly for the underdog. So, uh, beautiful, beautiful pile. For some of you, I'm sensing something about gardens, about naturalism. So, uh, I feel like in your previous uh, past life, you were very adamant about taking care of your garden. For some of you, I'm sensing herbalism. Uh, things of that nature. Perhaps even in this life you may have some inter interest toward plants and herbalism and gardening. Perhaps uh, architect for gardens. I don't know how is it really uh, explained in English, but you know, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Perhaps uh, you were very, very capable of building beautiful garden or village paths and th things of that nature. I sense this great aesthetic talent in this lifetime that stems from your previous life, the previous past life, you know, where you guys had this great passion toward, you know, just nature and uh, making beautiful forms in nature uh, from plants, from trees and things of that nature, you know. Uh, let's see if we have anything else really significant here. <laughs> For some of you, I will have to put it out there. You may have had, or somebody close to your uh, to you guys may have had an alcohol addiction or something like that. And in this lifetime, I'm sensing you may have this strong aversion toward that. So, uh, if you have strong aversion toward alcohol or toward any other substance, you know. The reason may be that somebody close to you or you had this addiction in your previous uh, lifetime. So this is something that soul uh, really denies on a very deep level. So uh, if you were ever wondering why it is like that, that may be the reason. Um, but let's see. But I feel like you guys, some you guys had some very renowned and structured type of exercise. It had its specific name and for example it could have been Hatha Yoga or uh, Kundalini Yoga or I don't know some specific type of exercise that you may even have nowadays inclination toward you know so if some specific type of exercise even gymnastics I don't know uh, many of you are watching this channel uh, if you have this strong call toward some specific exercise, I, I'm feeling that is uh, the reason is your uh, your last uh, past life. So, uh, really beautiful pile. But that was our first pile. I hope you liked this reading. If you did, like and subscribe. And thank you for listening. Let's go on to the second pile. Second pile, we are exploring our last past life so stay tuned and let's see Second pile, your last 
lifetime. Let's see what we can get. What we can get about your last lifetime. We are having some spicy pile. Okay. As I'm already seeing some things, I cannot keep it quiet. What I see immediately, you guys have been a little bit badass in your last uh, lifetime. You may have had this jerkish side to you, to yourself, you know, uh, or were the bad boy, bad girl uh, type of a personality, you know. Uh, but I do see that people, um, people viewed you as being somewhat devilish, you know, perhaps uh, unpredictable or a little bit on the edgy side, you know. Uh, however, I see this quality of yours as being, you know, like warrior for justice, I feel like you guys had to be bad guy many times in your previous lifetime in order to um, to do the right thing in a situation, you know. Uh, so let's say perhaps the, I don't know, woman of your wife, of your best friend would get, would like to get with you and you guys would uh, ghost at your friends or something like that. So... Often you had to be the bad guy to do the right thing. Uh, but I feel like nobody really realized this about you guys. But they thought that you are just being your own rebellious self. So uh, that's really a unique thing that I'm getting from this pile, you know. Uh, yes, we do have Mars in first house. So for many of you, I feel like you were prone to... Um, being hurt easily by cuts or bruises or uh, how is it said uh, when you bake something and uh, you get burned or things of that nature so such type of uh, accidents often happen to you guys because you did live some type of a risky life because i feel like you were also financially very very stable like perhaps one of the wealthiest uh, people in the town you know because we do have some indication that you guys had a lot of money so I do believe that you had some type of risky uh, how do I say it risky hobbies you know uh, so really interesting and curious and mischievous vibe I'm getting from this pile you know uh, however uh, we do have here this Scorpio in the 12th house so I believe you were the type of a person who somehow always easily managed to get out of the problems you know uh, I mean like you could do just anything and somehow due to your charm due to your charismatic nature uh, not suffer too much due to your deeds you know so people weren't getting I feel like they weren't getting how you managed to do something like that, you know, how you manage to do some things that are a li little bit ambiguous, you know, uh, when it comes to their, um, how do I say, their impact on the outer world and not to get punished or uh, something of that nature. So, uh, but I believe like you guys had to face a lot of drama in your past life. So in this lifetime you may be the type of a conflict avoider or somebody who is, you know, because soul always carries that deep uh, subconscious, uh, how do I say, it's like a subconscious tattoo, you know, uh, our deepest levels always know some, somehow uh, what we experienced in our previous lifetimes, in our previous incarnations and versions of ourselves, you know. Uh, but really interesting. Uh, what else we had? 
I feel like you guys were obsessive about uh, being in the spotlight in your uh, past lifetime. So I do feel that you were some type of a celebrity, uh, you know. Uh, I'm even sensing motorbikes and uh, fast cars, things of that nature. So uh, I'm getting this feeling that you were prone to accidents due to such kind of devices, you know. Uh, because you had this risky, edgy side to yourselves. Uh, I feel like you were somewhat of an adrenaline junkie, you know. Uh, so really beautiful. I feel like you always had this um, adolescent nature to you guys. Like you never outgrew certain age. Like you may have been, I don't know, 40 and still in your mind like 18 years old boy or... Something like that, you know. Uh, so really beautiful. We do have Aries in the fifth house. So I believe that you guys have had a, re a really, mm, how do I say, a little bit competitive relationships with your children. I'm especially getting the eldest child, you know. Uh, I feel like your eldest child was always wanting to somehow... Uh, one up you or uh, show you that they are better than you uh, and in that lifetime you had great amount of well not great amount but decent amount of hard pain when it comes to your relationship with your eldest child so uh, I'm really getting that strong vibe so if you are having currently some type of parental doubts or um, some type of doubts when it comes to having children and things of that nature, it may may well stem from your previous incarnations where uh, I feel like you guys were incarnated in the family with your enemy, so I feel like your uh, eldest child was your enemy in the previous lifetime and uh, had come to even the, even the karma with you guys, so... Uh, it was not an easy relationship, but uh, I feel like in the end of that lifetime, you guys have spent the most of the bad karma with that person. So uh, that's something interesting. So if you have a certain person with whom relationship is easy in this lifetime, it may, may well be that uh, child of yours who was incarnated as an enemy of previous lifetime and that, and that and as a child in that lifetime, you know, just to spend that karma faster, you know. So that's something really beautiful. Um, I feel like you guys had have had some type of artificial hair color, even though you were perhaps a man. Perhaps I feel like you dyed your color. Your uh, hair was not, uh, not your natural color. And that's something really interesting here but let's see if we have anything else that we had interesting i feel like in your previous lifetime you did have some some time type of withdrawn attitude you know i feel like you had some type of fear when it comes to relationships when it comes to love you know i feel like you were reluctant to include yourselves into uh closer connections with other people so uh, I feel like you missed out a lot when it comes to that. So in this lifetime you may even be the clingy type or the one wanting to, you know, just to compensate for what you didn't really reach in your past life. So uh, that's something interesting I get, I'm getting from this life. I'm getting from this pile, you know, just... Um, Let's see, but I see like it doesn't matter your fear of relationships. Uh, I feel like you had very stable home life, so uh, everything was very structured, organized, a lot of hedonism there, you know. I feel like you guys really indulged when it comes to your home surroundings and that you had beautiful, beautiful home, really aesthetically pleasing one. And, you know, uh, you were the type of, of person who would be reluctant to leave your home just because you have a lot of comfort there so really interesting fact let's see what else we have 
Yeah, but I believe that was our second pile. I hope you liked this reading. If you did, like and subscribe. And thank you for listening. Let's go on. Third pile. What was happening in your past life? Third pile, what was happening in your past lifetime? Queen of Wands one wanted to pop, pop out, but let's see. If you were if you were a woman, you were a little bit more masculine type of a woman, and if you were a guy, you were very alpha type. But let's see. Third pile. What happened in your past lifetime? What happened in your last lifetime? I feel like you guys, first of all, had some very addictive love relationships. They were extremely intense, extremely influencing you and, you know, there was some obsessiveness when it comes to your love life in your past life. Let's see. Okay, first of all, for many of you, I'm getting that you guys have had some type of an early trauma. Yeah, I'm getting especially early that of a parent uh, for many of you. Uh, you had some type of an early trauma in your past life that really influenced and colored your entire lifetime, uh, you know, so... That's something really, really significant, especially I'm feeling that that influenced your love relationships a lot in your past life, you know. Uh, but let's see what else we have. I feel like you guys were really coping with some oof, just hard, hard and deep, uh, deep aspects of your own and human nature, you know. I feel like you really guys integrated your shadow side in your past life, you know. Uh, you were in touch with your feminine, you were in touch with your masculine, you were in touch with your uh, good, you were in touch with your bad side. So uh, you were just somebody who was a completely integrated personality, you know. Uh, and that's really interesting, Pal. Uh, for many of you, I feel like you were moving a lot in your past lifetime. So maybe even in this time, lifetime, you may have this need to uh, make the roots grow, you know, or to settle down. They may, there may be this strong urge to settle down in this lifetime. And the reason may be that in your previous lifetimes, you were constantly moving, never really felt... Uh, at peace, uh, in home, and things of that nature, you know. Uh, but let's see. I feel like in your last lifetime, you managed to transcend some some really, really serious problem in your nature, in your character, something that was... Um, something that was really burdening you and putting you down. For some of you, this will be really rare, but small portion. But for some of you, I'm feeling you guys had have had some type of incestuous relationship. Even uh, it doesn't have to be, it didn't have to be close family. I feel like there was a cousin, you know, uh, with whom you had some type of a relationship that was really a little bit, you know, transcending your uh, usual cousin type of a relationship and. I feel like you guys hid this fact, you know. Uh, you didn't want, didn't want the world to know that you guys uh, had had have had a little bit deviant sexuality in that lifetime, you know. Uh, but I do get this 
strong, intense, uh, burdening and, you know, just even a little bit toxic, toxic relationships, you know, uh, that weren't really, weren't really easy to, uh, easy to shake off, you know, I feel like you guys have gotten, in, I, I feel like there was one specific relationship that was bothering you practically your entire incarnation, so uh, your entire incarnation was colored by this one specific relationship who wasn't, wasn't bad, wasn't good, how could I explain it? Uh, it was like being trapped in a relationship with your karmic par partner for uh, the most of your life. So that's the vibe I'm getting uh, from this pile. So in this lifetime you may have some extraordinary need for freedom, for perhaps even light relationships. Uh, relationship that, relationships that will be um, devoid of complications, you know. Uh, you know, just, you may want to keep it light and easy breezy in this lifetime when it comes to your love affairs, you know, because I feel this deep soul level impression of being imprisoned when it comes to your love, um, being not, not being able to share your love with your world. Perhaps the reason was this incestuous relationship that you guys had, you know, uh, and I feel like many mind games were played when it comes to your relationships. For many of you, I feel also you had this soldier uh, phase of life. So uh, you were some type of army officer, soldier, I'm even getting general, you know. Uh, and you did have this just strong, rough... Uh, nature when it comes to you guys, you know, uh, I'm getting this really strong, uh, how, how do I say this in English, you know, a little bit like Hitler vibe, you know, uh, Hitler type of personality, extreme, intense, you know, uh, whatever you did, you did, but you did with great devotion, you know, so in this lifetime you may be striving to keep things, uh, as I already said, nonchalant and, you know, on a lighter note. Uh, and it would be due to the fact that in your previous lifetime you were this, uh, you know, just over the, the top type of personality. So, uh, this is really unique vibe in this pile. But let's see what else we have. We do have Jupiter in Scorpio, so yes... I'm having this really strong indication that you had a hidden spouse or hidden life partner. There was a reason that you guys, uh, because Jupiter represents a husband or life partner uh, in Vedic astrology in general. Uh, so when we have it in Scorpio, I do get this uh, indication that you guys had, had to hide your life partner in your previous lifetime. So... Uh, you may have uh, some type of aversion toward secrecy in this lifetime because due to that experience that you weren't really able to share your love. So, uh, really interesting. Um, but let's see what else we have. We do have Saturn in second house, so I believe you guys may have had experience some difficulties when it kept, when it comes to your money, especially when it comes to your savings uh, in your previous lifetime. Somehow uh, you never managed to keep your savings, you know, intact in your past life. So you may have a little bit of exist existential dread in this lifetime or... No. That's fine. Excuse me, my cat is wandering around. You know, uh, so I do get some a little bit of exist existential or material material dread. You know, uh, no. I'm sorry, guys. Yes. 
So take that into consideration. If you are feeling some type of similar dread in this lifetime, it may very well stem, you know, from previous lifetime, a lifetime of some difficulties where you guys had to deal with some less than ideal circumstances, you know. Uh, so that's something really beautiful. I feel like in your last lifetime, people would often often break up with their partner in, in order to get with you guys. So uh, you may have been the other man or other woman, you know. I'm sorry, guys. Other man or other woman who would get chosen in the end, if that makes sense. So, uh, let's see what else. So, although I feel like you guys had this tendency to keep things uh, light and easy, even in previous lifetime, I feel like you couldn't get it. You were constantly... Uh, you were constantly... You would just get in the situation that would put a lot more burden on you than necessary. So... Uh, that may be the reason why in this lifetime you may be a little bit reluctant to get into anything that seems overly difficult or overly complicated or, uh, you know, perhaps even some of you may be apathetic in this lifetime and uneager to get involved in too many affairs, but that's due to this subconscious soul memory you know that you guys carry from your previous lifetime when you were forced to be in some circumstances that really explored the darker sides of human nature and psyche so uh beautiful i feel like you often had to stand up for yourselves because you were surrounded with people who didn't really know the boundaries and uh so I feel like you had to develop this really strong soldier general even type of mentality uh, in order to just cope with demands, you know, so... Uh, but I believe that was that what we had for the third pile. I hope you liked this reading. If you did, like and subscribe and thank you for listening.